Well, let's take a look at the three-term Shuey approximation. This um, form of the approximation is presented by Hilterman in his short course notes, and he identifies this term. Obviously, it's the zero offset reflection coefficient. Uh, the second term controls amplitude variations primarily in the mid-range, and this term over here, the amplitude variations in the uh, far offsets. Uh, the constants that we have in here, A0, or you know, defined down here, and B0 uh, down here, which is used in the computation of A0. Uh, delta, delta sigma is uh, sigma 2 minus uh, sigma 1, obviously. And sigma without a subscript, a rho without a subscript, is uh, just the average of the um, average of the uh, uh, Poisson's ratios. So we're using uh, the same velocities and densities and Poisson's ratios that Ostrander uses in his model. Uh, we also we, we, we also need to um, incorporate uh, V sub s uh, at some point uh, and in, in order to get Poisson's ratio. So V sub s is uh, just equal to just using this relationship here between the ratio of V sub p squared and V sub s squared with uh, uh, Poisson's ratio. We can get calculate V sub s from V sub p uh, very easily using this uh, uh, relationship here. So when we looked at the two-term approximation, we saw that there were some differences. We we saw that for the combination of Poisson's ratios 0.3 and 0.1 that we have here the dashed lines that instead of kind of rising above this um, prediction for the amplitude variation with offset uh, using a, a DR and DV of 1.25 it actually fell below uh, we also see that the uh, reflection for VR and DR equal to 1.11 that, that it, it it uh, crosses um, uh, zero at, at about uh, at about the the, the right location, uh, but that we have this um, event coming out much higher above it, and the drop off here is, is is a good bit steeper. So there are some differences between the what we get from the two term approximation and what we see in Ostrander's paper. So over here now using the three term approximation again we're looking at uh, all three terms here in the uh, Shuey approximation and what we see now is that the for this um, difference in Poisson's ratios 0.3 and 0.1 that we have over here with the dashed lines that we get pretty good agreement now uh, it rises above the predicted um, <coughs> uh, as predicted by Ostrander. So for the um, values of Poisson ratio 0.4 and 0.1 that we have plotted over here, the solid lines, so it comes in as it should. Um, and uh, overall we see a pretty good match uh, between the 0.3 and 0.1 and 0.4 and 0.1 values of Poisson's ratio. Um, and, and I've added in a, a couple extra terms just to see how this varies as we get closer to zero and uh, but overall pretty good uh, pretty good agreement with the three term approximation and what Ostrander shows now I can't recall exactly what Ostrander uses he bases his results on, on uh, COFID and COFID incorporates the um, <clears throat> the Poisson's ratio and shows how amplitude variations do vary as a function of uh, Poisson's ratio and how Poisson's ratio is an important uh, uh, term. So we see uh, main takeaway here is that we do see uh, much better agreement uh, and um, with the three term approximation and uh, Ostrander's computations. So now gas saturation produces uh, the amplitude anomalies and changes in the AVO response as we talked about. So we've um, uh, been been you know pointing out for example that this class class two response is you know has basically a zero amplitude uh, that r zero term in the um, 
you know, the, the zero offset reflection coefficient is, is, is nearly zero here. But if we stack all these traces together, we're going to get a significant negative amplitude. Here we have uh, just kind of taken an intermediate class 1, 2 event and thrown that in there. If we look at the zero offset prediction for the reflection amplitude, it's going to have some positive uh, uh, amplitude. However, if we kind of follow this into the offsets here, as we go to longer offsets, we can see that when we stack, we'll have negative amplitudes out here at the higher angles. We'll have positive amplitudes here at the lower angles. When we sum all these together, we're going to get a stack amplitude of about zero. So you might miss the reservoir altogether. So these, this is just a, an example of how amplitude variation with offset. Again, we're concentrating on how the traces, the amplitude variations with offset, when you stack them all together, changes the amplitude that you might predict based on just a simple calculation of the reflection coefficient using velocities and, and densities that you would see in your uh, sonic intensity law. So, so again, just kind of coming back to one of the reasons that we're looking at AVO. Uh, and again, here we we can't lose sight of the fact that Domenico uh, points out that we can get these high amplitude anomalies with a very small uh, fraction of gas. Um, you know, less than uh, less than five percent or so will produce a, a large anomaly, and that uh, increasing the gas fraction above um, uh, 0.05 produces very little additional change in amplitude. So it's not a good measure of whether or not you have significant gas accumulation or not, these amplitude variations that you see in a stack seismic section. So there are a couple things to keep in mind. One, that we're stacking amplitudes in a common midpoint gatherer that vary with offset and uh, also the fact that small amounts of gas saturation can produce large anomalies. So <clears throat> that's, again, kind of emphasized, uh, emphasized here. Uh, just kind of the takeaway should be that um, the uh, stack amplitude can be quite different than, than the uh, zero offset uh, reflection amplitude that you might predict using a standard approach to, cal to the uh, calculation of a synthetic seismogram for, uh, uh, you know, tying a well to a, a seismic section. So we saw pretty good agreement here. Um, we, you know, with the uh, three-term approximation, we've, again, we're kind of pointing out that a positive reflection coefficient at zero offset here could become, easily become zero. Uh, that a zero amplitude reflection coefficient that you might predict from your sonic and density log could easily become negative when we sum all the amplitudes together. So just, just kind of uh, emphasizing that, uh, that point and noting that the AVO response can be more revealing and it may also help you understand what you see in your uh, stack uh, seismic, uh, you know, some of the differences that you see between the synthetics that you generate and the s stack uh, seismic response, these amplitude variations with offset. Here we've got um, <clears throat> no change in Poisson ratio for the dashed lines. And you can see that they pretty much, they're fairly level across different offsets, some, some minor changes. Uh, over here we've kind of reverse the we've we've got Poisson's ratio actually increasing into the gas sand so you can see that that produces an increase in amplitude with uh, with offset so depending on what's happening as you go from one interval to another whether the Poisson's ratio is increasing or decreasing we're going to see quite different things going on uh, with offset here the solid lines for a significant decrease in Poisson's ratio here uh, some increase with uh, kind of a minor increase in Poisson's ratio as we go into the gas sand from decreasing into the gas into the sand to increasing into the sand uh, and what we see in the stack traces is obviously going to vary uh, as well so uh, 
So this AV, AVO response can be quite revealing. Now, you know, as we as we go on, we'll um, we'll we'll um, talk. To, well, I just should point out that this would be a um, classified as a class four uh, uh, AVO anomaly. But as we go on, um, we'll take a look at some other approximations. We'll take a look at the Bortfield uh, approximation and the uh, uh, Aki Richards uh, approximations. And uh, we should kind of come back uh, maybe to a starting point here and note that a lot of what happens here, the changes in amplitude with offset, are a function of uh, mode conversion. So some of the P wave energy is converted into a shear wave and uh, the rest is converted into a uh, P wave and then also differing amounts of uh, a P wave and uh, SV wave energy are transmitted into the underlying uh, interval. So these amplitude variations with offset are also telling us something about the conversion of uh, P wave into SV wave um, and transmission into SV wave uh, components. And later on we'll see that this is going to be important because we'll be able to come up with uh, shear wave and P wave inversions and actually invert for um, the impedances um, uh, the shear wave and uh, P wave impedances and also the density if we have uh, some fairly long offsets. So as we as we go on uh, we'll just kind of note that the three term Shuey approximation does a pretty good job, agrees pretty well with what we see over here in Ostrander's paper. And uh, next time around we're going to take a look at the Aki Richards and Bortfield uh, approximations uh, as we as we go forward with uh, our look at uh, amplitude variations with offset. So thanks for uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, uh, hope to see you next time.